Hey guys, it's Evan and Harrison from the Wildlife Brothers, and we're on location in Southern Maryland for the weekend, and in our usual style, we decided to turn this trip into a herping expedition. Absolutely. We've been getting a lot of requests from you guys to do more herping videos, so we're gonna get out into the environment over the next couple days and see how many species of reptiles and amphibians we can find, and maybe some other surprises. We stand the chance to see a lot of different species down here, so we're super excited to get out into the environment and see what kind of herps we can find here in Maryland. Our first find here in Maryland is this little fowler's toad, a very common amphibian species in this area, but actually not one that we've gotten to film before. Now, we come across a lot of American toads down in Pennsylvania, and the way that we were able to identify this as a fowler's toad was actually looking at his back. Now, if you notice, there's all that green coloration mixed in there. You see that? Mm-hmm. That is a very distinct feature about the Fowler's Toad. These guys often have a lot more of a green tinge to their bodies than do the American Toads. And a very easy tell is if you look in his spots there, you'll notice that for each of those dark brown spots, there are about three to four warts in there. Whereas with the American Toads, they'll usually only have one wart in their spots. So that is a very dead giveaway that this is a Fowler's Toad. Now this species usually inhabits open woodlands or sandy areas, a lot less leaf litter than the American toad usually prefers. So not only do they have a coloration difference, Fowler's toads also have a little bit of a different habitat preference than the American toad, which is oftentimes why we don't find this species in our area. We don't have as much of that open woodland and sandy areas that these guys prefer. So it's really cool to come across a Fowler's toad here in Maryland and to kick off our trip with a really cool amphibian. The most surprising find of our herping adventure came only a minute or so after we released the Fowler's toad. As we were exploring by a small pond, we saw a turtle buried down under the reeds, and luckily I was able to move in and make a successful capture. This is the eastern mud turtle, a common species of semi-aquatic turtle found throughout the eastern US from New York to Florida. They prefer slow-moving bodies of water with lots of vegetation, and will inhabit rivers, ponds, and swamps. The eastern mud turtle gets its name from its tendency to burrow into the mud when hibernating, and they are also known to bury themselves quickly when threatened. The drab brown coloration of the carapace aids the turtle in camouflaging itself when it is trying to escape, and the dense shell keeps them well protected from would-be predators. These guys are omnivorous and feed on aquatic invertebrates, fish, and plant materials. We had never caught an eastern mud turtle before, so it was incredibly exciting to see one in the wild, and a great way to round out our first day of herping. Alright everyone, so it's the beginning of day two here in Maryland, and if you take a look out over the water today, it is incredible. So let's talk about the conditions a little bit. So it's gonna be right around 75, 76 degrees today, which is perfect weather for us and should be good enough for a lot of the reptiles and amphibians in the area. It's a little bit overcast today, so we're not exactly sure how that's gonna factor in to our herping expedition today, but overall, it is a lot better than what we thought. It was supposed to rain today, actually. So we're super excited to get out into the environment and see what kind of species we can find. It's just past seven in the morning now, so let's get out into the environment and see what reptiles are moving around today. All right, what you got, bro? So here we have a northern water snake, a fairly sized one at that. I just picked her up from the rocks here. She was just actually starting to bask. It's still early morning, around 10 o'clock now. So she was probably just heading out for the morning when I nabbed her. Now there are a ton of little holds and little hidey, uh, hidey holes in here in the rocks, which makes these guys notoriously difficult to grab from this location. So we're super excited to get this girl in hand and we're gonna take a closer look. This is the Northern Water Snake, a species we featured many times on the channel before, including from this exact location. And I just picked her up from the rocks over there where she was probably doing some foraging. Northern water snakes are active foragers, meaning that they'll pursue their prey through the environment, and out here in the Chesapeake Bay, these guys will be feeding on small fish, such as minnows and mummy chugs, and also on smaller amphibians, like frogs and maybe even toads. Now look at her, she's just flicking her tongue in and out of her mouth there, trying to get a read on what's going on right now. Now northern water snakes are what's called cathemeral, meaning that they're active during the day and night, and what's interesting is they will actually change their hunting behavior to match the time of day. 
During the day, they'll be focused more on diurnal species such as fish, and at night, they'll turn their attention towards amphibians or animals that are moving around more at that time of day. You can see she's a very, very pretty and very calm individual. She's being a great sport for us, and no trip to Maryland is complete without catching one of these incredible snakes. So we're gonna get this little northern water snake back into the environment and hopefully find a lot more. Bye, sweetheart. So it's our second night here in Maryland. The sun has completely gone down now, and it's time for us to go night herping, which is one of our favorite activities. So we're out here with a very big spotlight that Evan is using to light up this shot, and we're looking for amphibians like this fowler's toad who we just caught. So this is the second fowler's toad of the trip, and we're really excited to get this guy on camera our target for tonight is a frog species that we've seen several times, but has eluded us every time we've tried to go for the capture, the leopard frog. So let's get into the environment and see if we can get one of those frogs on camera. All right, that's our target species, the southern leopard frog. We think it's a southern, just based on the fact that we're here in Maryland, it could be a northern leopard frog. We'll have to check once we get it. But I'm committing to this one, guys. Yep, watch your footing in here, bro. Yep, I don't know how deep it is yet, but Oh, it's not deep. Okay. I'm cutting off his source of escape in the hopes that we finally get one of these guys. Trust me, it's not super pleasant, guys, but worth it for a new herp for this year. Got him. Nice. Yep. Full send on the grab for sure. Definitely. All right, you want to get him into a more controlled environment? Yeah, let's do that. So we have our target species for the night, the northern leopard frog. Take a look at this guy. Now, these guys are found across much of the eastern United States, and there are two different subspecies of the leopard frog, the northern and the southern. We believe this to be a northern leopard frog based on the coloration around the head there, but unfortunately, we don't find these guys very often. So we did have a little bit of trouble identifying him right at the start, but we're fairly certain that this is the northern leopard frog. And they call them leopard frogs because you can see all of that beautiful patterning that gives them their name it looks exactly like leopard spots and that extends to the legs as well these guys have an insectivorous diet like most of the amphibians that we find out here in maryland so they're taking care of all of the flies that have been pestering us as we're trying to get this shot and it was really cool to come out here night herping in maryland and getting our target species of amphibian on camera for you guys. This is in fact the first northern leopard frog that we've filmed since we started the Wildlife Brothers. We have caught them before. This isn't exactly a lifer for us, but it is definitely a lifer since we started the channel. So that is so cool getting another species of amphibian down here in Maryland. All right, so we're gonna get this little northern leopard frog back into the environment. And that is probably gonna cap off our night herping here, but we have one more day left in Maryland, so we'll see what we get tomorrow, what do you say? All right, let's do it. Awesome, let's say goodbye to this little guy. He might give us a good jump here. Good morning, guys, it's day three here in Maryland, and already right behind us, we have the two apex predators in this ecosystem, the Western Osprey and the Great Blue Heron. So we're gonna get out there and see what else we can find on our last day here. It's the target, bro. So it's late day three here in Maryland. We've actually come to a different part of the state now, and on an earlier location scouting run, we came across some five-line skinks. These guys are notoriously hard to catch, so if you get them in hand or anything else, you guys will see it, and if not, we'll head to the outro. This is incredibly exciting, guys. This is the five-line skink, and actually the first lizard we have ever caught outside of Florida. So we are so happy to actually have this guy in hand. Now take a look at this specimen. You can see he has those namesake five lines that run along the entire length of his body from the top of his head all the way down through his tail, which I'll show you in a second. And this is an absolutely fascinating little species. They prefer areas of wooded habitat like we're in now, especially in rocks like where we just flipped him from and they are so cool looking I want to show you that tail because it's one of their most distinct features take a look at those blue lines that run basically from the base of their tail all the way to the end it makes them incredibly recognizable and you'll notice his tail just comes off into a nub there that's because he probably dropped it off at some point from a predator but it's starting to grow back so he will be just fine 
These guys are insectivorous primarily, so they'll be eating small beetles, arthropods, and worms, and things like that at this size, but some individuals that are larger have been known to take newborn mice, small amphibians, and even other lizards from time to time, so they do have a pretty diverse diet. Now, we're going to be covering these guys more in detail in a video later, but in terms of the Maryland Harping Challenge, we are so, so happy to actually have our very first lizard on camera and in hand. So we hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see what else is out here. I would say this was a pretty fantastic trip down here in the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. We've never caught what we call the trifecta of herps, snakes, turtles, and lizards, all in the same location outside of Florida. So this was definitely a super exciting trip for us. Absolutely. For me, this trip absolutely blew my expectations of what was possible down here in Maryland definitely. out of the water. We've never had success like this, even though this is our fourth consecutive year visiting this location. So we were thrilled to get this episode out for you guys. And if you enjoyed watching this video as much as we did making it, make sure to leave a like on the video and tell us in the comments down below which hurt from this episode was your favorite. And be sure to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers as well because we have lots more content coming out. We have more herping stuff and other species as well coming very soon. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. Oh, that is a heron from the front. That is a heron from the front. Oh, heron from the front. Look at that. That is mwah, heron from the front. <laughs>